Mormons teach that God Almighty was once a man just like us. That's right. He was a man just like us who had a father and a mother. He worshiped another God and he eventually became God himself. In turn, they also have always taught and teach that men can become gods just like God did. Since God was once a man, and he became God. So we who are men can also become gods as well and perhaps have our own planets and populate them and all of that sort of thing. And they even have a little phrase that says, as God once was, so man can be. So as he was a man, we can be gods. Now, here's the thing. Are Mormons changing that teaching? Are they backtracking on it and changing it? Or are they just trying to make it seem like it's changed, even though they haven't changed it? Are they whitewashing their teachings? Are they candy coating them to make them more palatable to the average common man? I mean, <laughs> this is not to poke fun or anything, but like, who would seriously believe that? It's almost like Scientology or some science fiction that, oh, we're all going to become gods and have our own planet. And God was once a man. And I know that Joseph Smith and Mormons actually said, you know, Christians called them blasphemers and Christians, you know, said that they were crazy. And But they said, no, this is what makes us true. It's Christians who changed their real teaching, Christendom. But in reality, Mormons, as we're going to see with proof in this video, I'm going to show you that they have always taught this. They have always taught that God was a man, which is insane and blasphemy from a Christian perspective, and that men can become gods. Now, today, you're going to hear them say things like, oh, you don't, maybe you don't actually become gods. Now, of course, Mormons are all over the board on this, but you'll hear many say, no, we become like God. No, we become like our Heavenly Father. No, we enter into a relationship with him and we become like him. So they'll have all these catchphrases which make it more palatable to man. But as we're going to see in one second, they actually have always taught that we become gods. We can achieve godhood. It's called exaltation and that God was once a man like us. So they do still teach this. It's on their own website. Toward the end of this video, I'm going to read from the website, the LDS.com Mormon website, official website. I'm going to read what they say. They still teach this, even though it's couched under a lot of fluffy language, which make, makes it just seem like, oh, well, you know, maybe we're just like our Heavenly Father. And that's what people say today. And even many Mormons today don't know this, which is why we're going to go through their own prophets right now, their own teachers, their apostles, the highest authorities in their church have taught this. So let's get to it. The Mormon website itself says that the scriptures tell us there are many gods and many lords, but to us there is but one God the Father. Doctrines and Covenants, which is another scripture of the Mormon church, in 130 it says that the Father, Father God, God in heaven, has a body of flesh and bones as tangible as man's. The Son also. But the Holy Spirit has not a body of flesh and bones, but is a personage of spirit. Now, this contradicts Christianity and the Bible because the Bible says in John 4, 24, that God is spirit. It also says that God is invisible. It also says that God can't be seen and so on. But they said that God has a body of flesh because he was a man like us. Now, the founder of the Mormon church, Joseph Smith, who claimed that he saw God the Father and God the Son, they both appeared to him. They appeared to him in flesh, like because they both had flesh and bones. This is what Joseph Smith says about God. So, obviously the highest authority in the church. He says that God himself was once as we are now, and is an exalted man, and sits enthroned in yonder heavens. It is the first principle of the gospel to know for a certainty the character of God. Yea, that God himself, the Father of us all, dwelt on an earth the same as Jesus Christ himself did, and I will show it from the Bible. So, Joseph Smith clearly teaches that God was once a man. He lived on an earth, worshipped another God, and as we're going to see, he himself became God. Now, many Mormons will say, okay, Brian, this isn't doctrine. This has never been doctrine. Now, notice Joseph Smith said that this is the first principle of the gospel to know exactly who God is, the character of God. So, 
This is primary for Joseph Smith. This is as doctrinal as it gets in his view. And he goes on to say that here then is eternal life to know the only wise and true God. And you have to learn how to become gods yourselves and to be kings and priests to God, the same as all the gods have done before you. The head God called together the gods and sat at a grand council to bring forth the world. So all the gods got together and brought forth the world? Now, tell me, no, no making fun, but seriously, like, doesn't this sound like science fiction? Doesn't this sound like Scientology? It doesn't sound like Christianity. This, and, and even the Mormon website and Mormon doctrine admits that this is departing from Christianity because they believe that other Christians got it wrong and Joseph Smith has got it right. But one of the gods brought forth the gods? He says that's the meaning of the word, that he brought forth other gods at the Grand Council. So there's a lot of problems with this to begin with, but it's clear that Joseph Smith taught that God was a man, that he became God, and that we ourselves can become gods just like other gods have before us. And these are extended quotes, of which I'm not reading them all because I'm going to bore everyone to death, but you can see more quotes here on the screen. But he goes on to say one more thing. He says, the prophet says there are many gods, and these are his critics who are saying this. The prophet says there are many gods, and this proves that he has fallen. That's what people are saying about Joseph Smith. He's crazy. He's fallen away from Christianity. He thinks there's many gods. And he goes on to say, I have always declared God to be a distinct personage Jesus Christ, a separate and distinct personage from God the Father, and the Holy Ghost, a distinct personage and a spirit. And these three constitute three distinct personages and three gods. He finishes up by saying, I wish to declare I have always and in all congregations when I have preached on the subject of the deity, it has been the plurality of gods. I don't think that can be more clear. Now, I know that, you know, in regarding to black people, which weren't allowed in their priesthood until 1978, polygamy and many other things, they've tried to walk back and say, oh, we didn't really teach that, or it was this, or it was because of that. But if you read the actual writings of their teachings down through the centuries, it's so clear that they taught these doctrines. No matter how much they want to water them down today or walk them back or just say, oh, no, we're all children of God. Oh, no, well, you can all be like our Heavenly Father, which is true. But that doesn't take away from everything else that you really teach underneath all that and everything that's been said. Brigham Young was their second prophet, and he was the second leader of the Mormon church, and he has a lot to say on this issue, too. And it's pretty much the same as Joseph Smith. Listen to what he says. God is our father, the father of our spirits, and was once a man in mortal flesh as we are, and is now an exalted being. It appears ridiculous to the world, under their darkened and erroneous traditions, that God has once been a finite being. You will see a time when you will have millions of children around you. If you are faithful to the covenants, you will be mothers of nations. You will become eaves to earths like this. And when you have assisted in peopling one earth, there are millions of earths still in the course of creation. I mean, this is just one quote of many where it's saying that God became God and basically created what we have today. See, Mormons believe in a pre-existence, which no other Christian in the history of Christianity ever accepted, of course. But they believe that our souls have been around for eternity, that God the Father and God the Mother up in heaven brought forth these souls, and then earthly parents organized them into material and they came to earth. But the bottom line is the father and mother in heaven, God and his wife in heaven. Yes, Mormons believe that God is married in heaven, even though Jesus said there is no marriage or giving in marriage in heaven. But besides that, they believe that God has a wife or wives, depending on the one. And you have to be married according to Mormon doctrine, to get to the highest heaven. You have to be married to get to the celestial kingdom and become a god. And once you do, you can have children and populate a planet. He said, you will see a time when there will be millions of people around you, millions of children around you. In other words, you can do the same exact thing. He goes on to say in another quote that God once possessed a body as we do now. Think about that. Think about that. Seriously. I mean, 
for Mormons who are born into this, this seems totally natural, normal. It's their worldview. There's no reason to question it. I mean, maybe there is. I know a lot of Mormons have questions, even though they're not really allowed to. But for Christians, normal Christians, for 2,000 years, nobody ever taught this. That God was once a man, it's blasphemy. God is eternal, uncreated, unknowable, un like on everything. Like he's just God from eternity. God doesn't have a beginning. He doesn't have an end. That's literally the word for eternal. That's what eternal means. But he goes on to say that every iota of this organization, the Mormon organization, is necessary to secure for us an exaltation with the gods. In other words, we can become gods. We can become exalted just like God was. He goes on to say, he was once a man like you and I are now once on an earth like this. So it's the same thing Joseph Smith said, that he lived on an earth like this. He passed through ordeals that uh, you and I have passed through. He had a father and a mother, and he has been exalted through his faithfulness. Then he goes on to say how he begot our spirits with his wife in the spirit world, and then those spirits came to earth and so on. And Basically, we do the exact same thing. So this has always been Mormon teaching people. So when people online, especially in our original video, which was just made on a whim and was kind of sassy and not intentionally, but we have like thousands, I think over 10,000 comments on that video on 10 things Mormons won't tell you. This is just one of those 10 things. In the comment section, people are like, no, we don't become gods. No, that's not doctrine. No, that's not true. You're making things up. But it's all over Mormon teaching. It's all over their own website. It's everywhere. You literally can't deny this teaching. And the doctrinal view of it too, like the seriousness of this, the necessity of this, can't be denied either. But let's look at a few more, you know, just so, you know, you get the picture. That's not one or two people. It's not me making up. I really want to try to present a clear and contextual analysis of this. The Apostle Orson Pratt also confirms this as well. I'm not going to read the whole quote. He has two really long ones that I'm not going to talk about here, but I'm going to read you a section of them so you can see. And if you want to pause the video, you can see the whole quote for itself. But he says, how can we believe this when we believe in the revelation given through Joseph Smith that there are many gods and that Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob are gods and that all good men in this church shall become gods. This explains the mystery. If we should take a million of worlds like this and number their particles, we should find that there are more gods than there are particles of matter in those worlds. You know, <laughs> so in my original video, 10 Things Mormons Will Never Tell You, I said that the Mormons believe in millions of gods and they did not like that. But this guy literally seems to imply that there are millions of gods. If you should take a million worlds, then there are more gods than there are particles of matter in all of those worlds. Now, there might not be millions. I don't know how many there are. They don't know how many there are. They, I don't think they've really thought through this doctrine very deeply. But he goes on to say this. One world has a personal god or father and inhabitants thereof that worship the attributes of that god. Another world has another, and they worship his attributes. And besides him, there is no other. And they worship him and they are the same, worshiping at the same time, attributes dwell in all the personal gods. So in other words, you have one God who's worshiping another God, who in turn is worshiping another God, who in turn is worshiping another God in another world, and so on and so on. This isn't Christianity, people. Like, if Mormons have never heard this, maybe, I mean, with all the revisionist history in Mormonism, you may not have ever heard this. You might not have known this yourselves. You may have heard, yeah, you know, we're all supposed to be like the Heavenly Father. Yeah, we're all called to be His children. Yeah, we're all supposed to share in His divine attributes. That could mean many different things, but this is what it has traditionally meant. Orson Pratt finishes up in another quote when he says that the gods were exalted also from fallen men to celestial gods to inhabit their heaven forever and ever. There are many gods, each one of whom has his own wife or wives, which were given to him previous to his redemption. Each god through his wife or wives raises up a numerous family of sons and daughters, and they will multiply forever and ever. So it's the same thing that Brigham Young said. You become a god, you have your own planet, you populate that earth with millions of sons and daughters, and you continue to multiply forever. It's the same thing. It's a continual doctrinal teaching down through the centuries of Mormonism. I mean, not too many centuries, but since its inception. 
Perhaps one of the most famous ones comes from Prophet Lorenzo Snow, and he coined a phrase that pretty much all Mormons used and have used. And he says, as man is, God once was. And as God is now, so man may be. In other words, God was once a man and we can be God, but he summed it up in this couplet. And he says, this is in perfect harmony with the teachings of Jesus Christ and his promises. If you look down through, you know, the last century, you're going to see Mormon elders, Mormon prophets, presidents, apostles, just people in general quoting this as man is now, God once was, and as God is, man may be. Just for example, President Spencer Kimball, he says, we remember the numerous scriptures which contradict, concentrated in a single line were said by the former prophet Lorenzo Snow, as man is, God once was, and as God is, man will become. So he goes on to say that there is a power available to us to reach perfection and to receive the experience of the power to create, to organize, to control native elements. In other words, to seemingly to make your own planet. How limited we are now, he says. We have no power to force the grass to grow, the plants to emerge, or seeds to develop. But he goes on to say that we will have that power when we are perfected and become as God is. If you need more proof, Gordon B. Hinckley has said a lot about this, even on national media, and Time Magazine has called him out on some things, but listen to what he says. He says this, On the other hand, the whole design of the gospel is to lead us onward and upward to greater achievement, even and eventually to godhood. This great possibility was enunciated by the prophet Joseph Smith in the King Follett sermon and emphasized by President Lorenzo Snow, which we just quoted. It is the grand and incomparable concept that as God is, man may become. Our enemies have criticized us for believing this. So literally, this is keeping in the continuity of doctrine in the church. Joseph Smith said it. The second president said it. Everyone since them said it. Then President Snow said it. So he's literally quoting all the people the authorities before him who have taught this, which is why he said, even despite the fact that our enemies criticize us for believing something so ridiculous, we believe this because we believe it's from God. At a general conference, Elder Marion Romney said this exact thing. He said that Joseph Smith taught this as an obvious truth. I mean, it's obvious. We become gods. God was once man. I mean, that's doctrine. That's obvious. That's always been the teaching of Mormonism. As a matter of fact, he said, he taught that through this process, God himself attained perfection. See, they believe that God wasn't perfect. He became, well, that's weird that he said God attained perfection. Huh. Because in other quotes, they said that God hasn't attained perfection yet. He's still growing in power, still growing in glory, still acquiring knowledge, and he's still growing toward perfection. That's weird. But he goes on to say that from President Snow's understanding of the teachings of the prophet on this doctrinal point. Again, I'm going to read that again. From President Snow's understanding of these teachings of the prophet on this doctrinal point, he then coined a familiar couplet, as man is, God once was, as God is, man may become. This teaching is peculiar to the restored gospel of Jesus Christ. So he admits that this only is taught by Mormons. It's only peculiar to what Mormons teach. And he teaches that it, number one, comes from the prophet himself. This is a divine teaching. Number two, it was passed on. And that three, God had to obtain perfection. He wasn't perfect. Like to Christians, we can't understand this kind of talk. It's blasphemy. It's blasphemy. God is perfect in and of himself from all eternity. He is who was, who is, and who will be forever. He is who he is the almighty eternal God, who is perfection by itself. He's the only one who's perfect and has been perfect and will be perfect forever. We will never be like him in that sense. So this is very, very interesting. And I could read quote after quote after quote after quote of elders and, I mean, just people after people in the Mormon church teaching this. And I'll try to put some more additional ones down below that I didn't put in the video if you want to read those as well. But I'll read one more. At another annual conference, Orson Whitney says this. He says, We teach that men can become divine, that man is God in embryo, that God was once a man 
in mortality, in that the only difference between gods, angels, and men is a difference in education and development. One more. Melvin Ballard also says that this is doctrine. He says it's Mormon doctrine that it was announced by President Snow, who had many revelations, direct revelations from God, and who said that I've never seen things more clearly in my life. But besides that, he goes on to say that just because we believe this doesn't mean you're going to become a god. He says, you have to become like God, which means you have to follow the laws, which means you have to practice virtue. You have to become perfect. And many people are too lazy and willing to do that. So just because we believe we can become gods doesn't mean most people are going to be. Most people, he says, will not probably reach the celestial kingdom, but yet there are some that will. So this has been a constant teaching. And I have pages and pages of quotes that I just don't want to bore you with of more and more and more people who have taught this, who believe this. And it's all a continual teaching of the same thought process that started with Joseph Smith and continued with Brigham Young and continued down through the Mormon teaching and line. And I even have a, uh, I think it's like a two hour uh, discussion. Uh, it's not a debate. It's more of a discussion, a conversation between what Mormons believe and what Catholics believe. And they use the official Mormon spokesman who's literally allowed to speak for the Mormon church. He was allowed to debate or converse with Patrick Madrid on this topic, and he specifically said that Mormons can become gods. He said this is doctrine. I mean, up until recently, when we realized that nobody's actually going to believe this unless we change the teachings and we water it down and we make it more palatable, even Jehovah's Witnesses are now doing this with their teachings because in a day where you can look up everything online and we go by facts and science and we don't go by things that don't seem like true, people are not believing these things. And people are walking away from the Mormon church and the Jehovah's Witnesses and other cults like that in droves because they realize that in olden days, yeah, they weren't allowed to read books. Yes, they weren't allowed to study or question, but now they can secretly in their own house, they can look up all these things for themselves. And so they're starting to revise these things and show that, hey, yeah, no, it's really like this. Or no, it's this is not really what was said. It's it's really believing this. So, you know, we're just going to become like the Heavenly Father. Well, what does it mean to become like God? They say things like, oh, we're going to share in His perfection. We're going to share in His divine attributes. What does that mean? They say, oh, we're going to become just like Christ. What does that mean? According to the Mormon Church, Christ is God, Almighty God. In fact, the Book of Alma in the Book of Mormon, says that Christ is the very eternal God. He is the very eternal Father. So he is God himself, according to the Book of Mormon and according to Mormonism itself, and according to the LDS website. Jesus is God. So if we're going to become like Jesus, which is a nice fluffy puffy idea, in reality it means we're going to become God ourselves, just as Jesus did. Jesus wasn't always God, as Christians teach. He became God just like the Father did, and so on. It's a it's a spectrum. It's a long journey of many gods who have done this before us and will do this after us. Just to finish up, and many people might not be interested in this last part, uh, except for maybe Mormons who are doubting, questioning, or just want to know what their church has legitimately taught without all the watering down. Uh, I'm going to go through a little article, just one article of several on their website. The article is called Becoming Like God. So it's a nice fluffy article, you know, but it, the article actually talks about how we can become God, how this has been forever. And as you're going to see, this is scary. Mormons teach a very new age teaching, very new age teaching, because I'm an expert on new age teachings. And I actually just wrote a book on the new age movement. It's somewhere back there. And new age teaching. Listen, it says the very fact that they say we are divine at our core. That's what Mormons teach. We are divine at our core. We're in inherently divine, not human, divine, because we existed before this earth. We all have divine potential because we are the same nature as God. Now that's blasphemy because only God is divine in Christianity, real Christianity. Um, he's divine from all eternity. We are not. They even call it the human potential. This is exactly what New Agers call it. They even had a whole movement called the human potential movement where it says that we are God. And when we realize that we're divine and we're God, we can do what God did. This is literally the central teaching of the New Age movement. And it's a, a central teaching of the Mormon doctrines as well. The Mormon, uh, I can't call it a church because it's not, but a Mormon assembly as well. Listen to what this article says. I'm just going to give you a few uh, tidbits of the article. And if you want to go read it online for the whole thing, feel free to do that. 
The article begins by saying that uh, men and women have the potential to be exalted to the state of godliness. And it goes on to share tons of passages from the Bible that says we can become gods. And it quotes, you know, 1 Corinthians where it says, ye will be gods. And it quotes Genesis where it says, um, let us make man in our likeness and image. For Mormons, this means that there were many gods in the beginning and they created mankind. You know, they created everything that there was. And you can see this in this. It says, after Adam and Eve partook of the fruit, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, God said that they had become one of us, suggesting that a process of approaching godliness was already underway. I don't understand this. Maybe a Mormon can explain this to me. But if they sinned against God, they sinned against God by listening to the devil, and God said they have already become one of us, and the process of becoming godly by sinning and falling away from God. I I don't understand. It seems like a contradiction to me. But anyways, it says later in the Old Testament, a passage in the book of Psalms declares, I have said, ye are gods and you are all children of the most high. So many of the church fathers, they go on to say, the church fathers taught that you could become gods and that you had a divine life and you could become one with the divine. And of course, they proof text Uh, the early church fathers, the early Christians. And they say later on, Christians started to believe that God created the world ex nihilo, meaning out of nothing. God created the world out of nothing. Yeah, that's what Christians believe. And that's what we've always taught, that God created the world. The Mormons are saying that wasn't always the case. They used to believe that we became gods and that God didn't create the world out of nothing. And he created it out of existing elements, elements that already existed. But Joseph Smith, they say, learned that God desires his children to receive the same kind of exalted existence of which he partakes. In other words, Father became God. And we are called to share in that exact same exalted existence, meaning we can do the same. In the vision, he says, they learned that the just and unjust would receive immortality through a universal resurrection, but only those who overcome by faith and are sealed by the promise would receive the fullness of God's glory and become gods, even the sons of God. Earthly birth, then, is not the beginning of an individual's life. Man was also in the beginning with God. And of course, this is blasphemy. Anyone can read Isaiah chapter 44 to 46 to see that God was alone in the beginning. He created the world alone. He did everything alone because he alone is God. The following April, feeling like he was never in a closer relationship to God than at the present time, it was then that Joseph Smith spoke about the nature of God in the future of humankind to the saints who had gathered for a general conference. He used the occasion in part to reflect on the death of the church member named King Follett. And then he goes on to quote a lot of the quotes that we quoted earlier. What kind of a being is God? You have to learn to become gods yourself. As man once is, God once was, as God now is, man may be. All of these things that we've already said are on the Mormon website. They're on the Mormon website. Like, they're acknowledging that these things are true, that Joseph Smith taught these, that President Lorenzo Snow, the church's fifth president, coined this well-known couplet. This is here on the, the website. How important are teachings about exaltation to Latter-day Saints overall? That's the next section of this article on the Mormon website. How important is this? They go on to say that this is of the most important uh, teachings, and it says this is a fundamental doctrine. I'll read it for you. The teaching that human beings have a divine nature and future shapes the way Latter-day Saints see this fundamental doctrine doctrine. And there's a lot more that could be said, of course, but they call it a doctrine. They say we can become gods. They acknowledge what Joseph Smith said, uh, Lorenzo Snow said, and others. I mean, this is a continual teaching from unbroken down through the history of the Mormon religion. This is what Mormons have taught. So they have taught that God is man. They have taught that we can become gods. And really, I don't know how it can be doubted. So they basically downplay or change They don't change the teaching. They change the way they present the teaching. The teaching is clear on their website and their whole history, their prophets, their elders, their apostles. It's clear. Even ones I haven't read. It's clear that they have taught this, but the way they're presenting it to the world is different. What they'll say now is, oh, we're just children of God. We're all children of God. We're all going to be like our heavenly father. See, that's ambiguous. It's 
It's subjective. What does that mean? They don't go on to explain it. Oh, well, we all have divine attributes. Yeah, we all have divine attributes. Yeah, we all can share in Christ's divine life, but that doesn't mean we're going to become God. That doesn't mean we're going to become gods. That doesn't mean we are divine. In fact, the Catholic Church teaches, as does Christianity, that we remain creatures forever. We remain distinct from God. God is God alone forever, and man is man alone forever. Angels are angels. No one melds into the other or becomes the other. And so this is, you know, one thing, and that's another. They say one thing, but they believe another many times. So I think that's why many Mormons themselves are confused. Many Mormons say, we don't believe this. You're making things up. And that's why I quoted these extensively to show you that I'm not making these up. And so in closing, again, this is very New Age teaching. It always has been. Joseph Smith departed from the Christian faith. In another video, we'll show you even how his vision of God has changed multiple times. What he saw changed. I mean, the whole thing of Joseph Smith is just not credible. And you can read the CES letter for some information on that. Just Google CES letter Mormon, and it will come up and they'll show you a lot of things that you did not know before, perhaps. But the bottom line is pray for Mormons. If you are a Mormon, if you're questioning, if you're seeking, if you're doubting, it's okay. God is God. And, you know, many Mormons have left the church before you and they found the true God and they found the true Jesus Christ and they found peace, found happiness. And they wondered why they waited so long. But so many others are afraid to make that jump. But, you know, we should always follow the facts. Even in the Book of Mormon, Jesus says that if you want to follow me, you must pick up your cross daily and follow me. Meaning, sometimes you have to make a big sacrifice to follow me. You have to do what's hard to follow me. And so we all do. In our daily lives, we have to. But I hope that you like this video. I hope you found it helpful. I hope you found it informative. And I hope you will share it with others. And if you want more videos like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell notification icon because our videos come out every Thursday and every Sunday generally. And then we have some shorts in between. But if you would like to know when they come out exactly and keep up on them, feel free to subscribe. And feel free to leave a comment down below if you have any questions, if you have any thoughts, if you can answer the question that I asked in the video, I would love that. Um, but yeah, no, I would love to hear from you in the comments section below. I will also link our other videos below as well on Mormons that we have uh, made if you are interested in more information and research. We also have some on Jehovah's Witnesses, Seventh-day Adventists, Muslims, and other religions if you're interested in understanding what they believe as well. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to follow us on social media below. If you would like, support our Patreon, our PayPal, also below if you like the work we do. And make sure to check out our merch on our website, catholictruth.org. If you would like a Catholic speaker, check out our website. God bless you.